Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to um, <laughs> Better Health's uh, Ostomy webinar. I see some familiar names. Welcome back. Um, uh, I guess for those of you who have been with us before, you know how this goes. Um, we'll get started in just a minute. A um, couple of people are still joining. Um, but today um, is uh, a topic that is, I think, uh, close to a lot of our hearts um, and doesn't often come up, but we're all very, very excited um, to chat today. Um, I know Sho um, has been wanting to talk about this for a while. Also, um, we get a lot of questions about ostomy and intimacy. Um, so we're excited to, to jump right in. So let's do that. Um, Hi, uh, I'm Ariha. I'm joined by my colleague Siobhan. We both work at Better Health um, on the content and uh, education team. Uh, we do these weekly webinars every Thursday. Um, it's always on a different ostomy topic. Um, and today, like I said, we'll be talking about intimacy. Uh, that includes dating, uh, sex, relationships, um, everything that you need to know, but maybe you're too scared or embarrassed to ask um, about how stuff like this works after your ostomy surgery. Um, it's, you know, obviously a very important part of everyone's lives. And uh, sometimes it can be hard to um, bring it up because you're not sure who to talk about it with. Well, we're here to tell you that um, you can talk about it with us. You can ask us any questions. Uh, we'd love to hear your, your own tips and experiences. Um, and uh, we're, we're excited to dive in. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so again, I think most of you know who we are. Um, we're Better Health. Um, we are a, a medical provider, um, which means that uh, although we do uh, offer supplies, uh, we're not just a supplier. We take a holistic view of your health care journey. Um, we offer education, such as these webinars. We have a fantastic one-on-one um, -on -one coaching service uh, with, our, with some of our ostomy coaches, including Siobhan here. So you can call in um, and have a, have a private session and ask any questions or get any help that you might need. Um, and we also have a fantastic team of product experts um, who can help you kind of deal with any product related issues or get you free samples or anything like that. Um, so with that, I will pass it on to uh, Siobhan and we'll dive right in. Hi everyone, um, happy Thursday. I'm so glad you're here. Um, this is a topic that's dear and dear to my heart. Um, you know, I have, if, you, if you've been here before, you've probably seen these photos before. Uh, I have an ileostomy. I've had an ileostomy for six years. Before that, I was dealing with ulcerative colitis and um, pretty much some sort of bowel dysfunction for the majority of my life. So I am so happy to have my ileostomy. Um, it's made my quality of life infinitely better. I, um, it's given me a chance to be the parent I want and be the pet owner I want and be the spouse that I want. Um, and it's also given me back my sex life in, in quite a few ways. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be real, real open and direct with you guys today. Um, there's a picture of my, my amazing husband. I haven't usually put him up, uh, but there he is. He's, he's been with, the with me all through my journey uh, for the most part. We've been together as a couple for 24 years and we've been uh, married for 16. So uh, he's, he's been by my side for so long and I'm so appreciative of him as a partner um, in, in this whole journey. So, um, you know, hopefully with some of the things that I share from my own personal history and, and some of the advice today, uh, that we're giving you, you can also, you know, get out there and date all the other good stuff. So, um, you know, enough about me. Let's dive in. And uh, oh boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Uh, I was doing my background research. I was talking to one of our uh, doctors on staff, one of our nurses on staff, and, um, you know, other ostomates, other partners of ostomates. You know, and I realized that we could probably do a whole like series of webinars about um, sex and intimacy and relationships and emotions. So, you know, I, I want to say well done on being here today. It's it's tough to talk about this stuff. Um, if you're thinking about emotions and relationships and sex, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a great thing because it means that you're feeling good with your ostomy. Um, so, you know, it means you kind of want to up the ante on your quality of life. So again, welcome. I see some familiar names. I'm so glad you're here. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about um, intimacy. 
you know, and there's some key things I want you to keep in mind. Um, you know, the reality is a lot of people have a hard time talking about emotions and feelings and sex, and that's okay. Um, I'm here to uh, give you like that safe space to give you that frank and open conversation about these topics. So uh, please don't hesitate um, to ask questions in the chat. And um, and actually, uh, Ari had just uh, posted everybody uh, posted to folks um, in our chat that uh, you can ask questions via the chat. There's also a Q and A feature that you can choose to use. And then um, I'm trying to keep this sort of short and sweet today because we are uh, it's our first uh, first web webinar on this topic, and so we're not quite sure, you know, how people are are feeling about it, and you know, if we answer the right things or if we're not answering. Um, things that you want to know about. So please feel free to use those interactive functions with us. And that way um, we can know that we're answering your questions correctly and you're getting what you want to get out of this webinar. So, um, you know, intimacy has a key, some key components um, and it's successful when you're, when you have vulnerability, when you're willing to be open and share about um, what you're experiencing, um, when your partner is willing to be open and share about this. And I know that a lot of us, um, have gone through a lot of medical trauma related to our ostomies um, and we've been made to be vulnerable in a lot of ways. Um, but in this case, it's more about taking your power back, taking your sense of uh, autonomy and um, agency back and, you know, saying, I'm choosing to share this stuff. You know, we're, you're not being made to by the medical community. You have control over that. Um, Good intimacy is good communication. Um, I need statements are a wonderful way to say I what you need without sort of putting anything on your partner. Um, so you know you want to keep that out that those uh, doors and windows, the whole house, open up the whole house with good communication. Keep those statements coming. You know, be clear and direct. Uh, you know, when it, this isn't the time to be coy with people, you know, you know, sort of, I have a secret, you know, whatever. That's not going to, I don't think that's going to get you where you want to go. Um, but it, maybe in the bedroom talk, that might be a little fun. But, you know, in everyday conversation, when you're trying to get alignment with your partner um, about whatever, your relationship, uh, your dating life, your sex life, uh, be clear and direct. And then, you know, be honest, keep it real. Say, you know, I'm not feeling this right now or the ostomy is giving some trouble. So, um, you know, that sort of date might not be the best thing for me. Um, you know, so I know a lot of us have digestion issues still. So, you know, being real about, you know, I don't feel like going out to a restaurant or that particular restaurant because it's super spicy. It always upsets my stoma, things like that. So you, your partner, and your ostomy, it can kind of feel like uh, an uninvited third wheel with your ostomy. And I find it very helpful um, to view my ostomy the same way as I would the impact of a baby or a pet on my relationship. Um, it's not completely within my control, but I also have strategies and options to manage how it affects um, both of us. So, you know, make sure when you have your, your partner with you, think of it as a team effort. You know, you accommodate your partner, your partner accommodates you, and there's no sort of unbalanced sacrificing or um, accommodating that, that's happening. So your partner experiences your ostomy too, um, from a different way. Um, and they also need time to adjust. Um, they also need support uh, and, and, you know, and, and a place to talk about how things are affecting them. And they need education. So, you know, I think in, in early in our relationship, my we kind of assumed, my husband and I, that I would have the ostomy and there wouldn't be any big changes, but there were changes and we needed to be educated about them and we had to go out and research them. And so, um, you know, that's what we did as both of us took some time to, to learn about, um, you know, ostomies and then to kind of share that knowledge together. Dating. So we have a lot of common uh, questions about dating. Um, the first one is, can I date with an ostomy? And the answer is absolutely yes. Get out there, find your beloved match. Trust me, you don't smell. And uh, you know, unless something's going horribly, horribly wrong, your ostomy pouch is gonna help manage that, any smells you might have. Um, I've never had anybody tell me that I smell. Um, and I have a 13 year old who doesn't pull her punches. So, uh, you know, I, I do trust her opinion on that. 
Um, 99% of the time, people can't tell that you're even wearing a bag if you have one. And, um, you know, in fact, I, today, I'm hopefully I'm going to see your faces, but I already know that you're looking fabulous, you're looking confident, and you're going to go out there and find a good date. Next question, will people want to date me? Absolutely, yes, again. Um, you know, let's face it, we're going to have to weed out some of the stingers who only see your ostomy bag or your medical condition and, and really not the real you. Um, and we have to acknowledge that not everyone can handle what we bring to the table, but um, there are many people who can. And the proof is in all of the ostomates out there who have successful relationships. Uh, with with other people, um, people who have accepted their ostomy and, and actually who helped care for them, like my husband has, through their illnesses and their surgeries. And then, you know, if you're out, if you're out there, you're getting dates, you're talking to people, um, you know, when should you tell somebody I have an ostomy? Um, and the goodest, the goodest, <laughs> um, the the best answer is probably when you're ready. Uh, but sooner is probably going to be better. I wouldn't say, you know, if you're comfortable on that first or second date, that might not be quite the time, you know, but if you're starting to build up feelings of intimacy, feelings of connection, feelings like you want to continue this relationship, um, you know, make sure that you give your partner um, the whole picture uh, and, and you're not withholding information because withholding information doesn't help build that foundation of trust that's present in a successful par partnership. And some more common questions about dating is, you know, how do I explain what an ostomy is? And as I mentioned, you and your partner can do some research either separately or together, um, you know, however you kind of feel like it is. Um, you should take out your supplies and explain what they do and how each part works. Um, and I was talking to uh, Ellen the other day, who was, who's joining us today in the um, webinar. Hi, Ellen. And she, she, made, uh, she made me laugh really hard when she said this. She's like, you know, when you take out your supplies, you probably shouldn't like flop your bag onto the restaurant table during your date. That's, that's probably not how you wanna approach it. Um, but you know, break out the clean supplies when you're at home um, and, and go over those fresh supplies. Um, and then you know, if your partner is ready to see, that's when you can show the bag and the output and all the other, and the stoma and all the other good stuff. And then you know, explore how your ostomy impacts each person. So what I mean by that is obviously if we have an ostomy, we as ostomates um, know how it impacts us. You know, we every single day we have just incredibly intimate, detailed, encyclopedic knowledge of how our in, uh, how our ostomies impact us. But our ostomies also impact our partners, and what I mean by that is that our partners will will come in and they might have to unpack our ostomy supplies or put them away in the closet or um, deal with insurance. You know, my husband. We'll deal with insurance companies all day long and be the, we'll call them the very stern and unyielding customer um, and, you know, advocate for me. And I don't have to worry about that part, but I know he doesn't like calling. He does it because he loves me. So, you know, there are impacts, um, you know, bag changes, traveling, all that other stuff. So again, as I mentioned, it's a team effort. You know, if you're getting into dating, you know, keep in mind a couple of things. Think about what you want out of the relationship and be clear on your goals. You know, are you going from point A to point B? Are you just casually dating? Are you looking for a long-term relationship? You know, are you even looking for a one night stand? These things impact like how you should approach your dating life. And then finally, if you're focused on the ostomy um, and how it might affect the relationship, keep in mind that by withholding that information um, from, from your partner, your potential partner, um, they're gonna sense that you're holding something back and that's gonna make them feel a little uneasy. So you should probably let them know sooner rather than later um, that you have this big thing in your life and that you're dealing with. And then again, if, if, this, if you're so afraid of dating with an ostomy, it might be time to kind of uh, work on yourself, you know, get yourself to the point where you are feeling confident with your ostomy and well with your ostomy and you feel like you're in control. And then 
um, you'll have that sense, you'll be attractive to other people. They'll sense that confidence, they'll sense that sense of well-being. And you know, that will definitely kind of up your, you know, your chances of finding a quality connection with somebody else. So there are long-term relationships. So there's sort of two different types of long-term relationships um, with an ostomy. Um, there, there's the, those type of relationships that started before one of the partners had an ostomy. And then there are those, the relationships that started after somebody had an ostomy. And I've seen both cases, um, you know, certainly um, I've heard of people getting married um, uh, getting married, getting divorced, and then getting married again with his ostomy. So, uh, you know, when he's had his for 40 years. Uh, so clearly, you know, we can make it happen for ourselves. Um, you know, I fall into the first category. You know, I started my relationship with my husband when we were, I think, first or second year of college. Um, you know, and I was largely asymptomatic. Uh, then my ulcerative colitis flared really badly. And, you know, the hospital stays started. And at that time, um, you know, we were in our mid twenties and we had planned on staying domestic partners. We weren't really interested in getting married, but um, you know, we were faced with the reality of him needing to be able to get information about me from hospital staff, from medical providers, of him wanting to be in the hospital with me. And so, you know, at the time, and now it's changing and it's getting a little better. Um, there's more acceptance of like sort of unmarried couples. Um, but at the time, you know, there wasn't. And so, you know, we decided, heck, we'll get married. You know, we'll make sure that um, we can, um, he can support me and be there for me. Um, and I'm, you know, and take care of me. And he did. So, you know, he's a quality partner and I'm, I'm really appreciative of that. There's a lot of similarities to um, managing your ostomy in a long-term relationship, but there's also some good news. Um, you know, after a long-term illness, like, irritable bowel uh, disease or cancer treatments or your ostomy um, or, you know, you, if you had some trauma and you had an ostomy after some trauma, um, you may you may be feeling better. Um, you're feeling healthier. Maybe your abdominal pain and discomfort have been diminished um, or disappeared altogether. Um, you're not running to the bathroom or living in the bathroom. Um, and, you know, I know at least a few of us here can completely relate to that life in the bathroom situation. Um, so your entire focus on uh, managing your illness is finally being able to stop and smell the roses. You know, your, your quality of life is improving. So, um, and that turn, and that in turn, that kind of gives you more confidence and confidence is super sexy. So, um, you know, your partner may have some time, may need some time in a long-term relationship if they've used, if they're used to, you being an invalid to switch their mindset over to you being healthy and um, confident and sexy. Um, and uh, so it, it can take time for them to adapt. So give them that time. Um, again, those, that good communication is so, uh, so, so, so super important. So, um, you know, my guess is that your partner is, is really happy to see that you're not only managing your ostomy, but thriving with your ostomy. Um, the opportunity to be involved to the level of their comfort. So I mentioned my husband, he'll deal with insurance all day long. He'll deal with hospitals all day long. He, you know, he'll deal with money all day long, but he does not want to see me change my pouch. And that's fine. That's his level of comfort. Um, and it's something we've talked about. You know, he's like, this is just not what I want. Um, and that's fine because I can manage my pouch uh, just fine by myself. Um, there are cases where the partner does manage the pouch changes and that's beautiful too. It's just all about figuring out where you are together. Um, and, you know, and a lot of credit. Um, it's not easy to be a caretaker. It has its own special challenges. Um, and I can, um, you know, I've, I'm now on the other side of the equation as a caretaker from my own parents. So I know that there are so many things um, that the caretaker has to manage and think about and the anxiety levels can be very, very high. So you know, make sure that you're thinking your partner, you're showing appreciation, um, you, uh, you're showing your gratitude and, and in different ways, if you're, depends on your love language, right? You know, is it gestures, is it actions, is it language, is it words? You know, make sure that, that you are um, keeping as much as you can to the extent that you can, if you're still dealing with illness, um, you know, engaged in the relationship and it doesn't become sort of one-sided, um, 
from, you know, there's somebody taking care of somebody else to, um, you know, I'm, yes, I'm taking care of you, but I know that you're still here and engaged. All right, sex. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully everybody's got warmed up now. We're feeling sort of, we talked about the emotions, which can be heavy stuff. You know, let's sort of talk about some of the practicalities. So one of the things that was really hard to hear for me when I had surgery was that, um, this is actually my second, and it was my second ostomy surgery, not my first. I don't really remember if this came up, but I remember during my second ostomy surgery that the surgeon said to me, you could lose um, sexual function. And I was kind of like, what, <laughs> why? And the reason is that, um, you know, surgery takes place on or near sexual organs. So this is part of skimmed over a lot. Um, and then you haven't, you're not aware that it might happen and it comes, any changes come as an unwelcome surprise. So. You know, surgery can damage the nerves that control sexual function, um, and surgery can affect the ability to orgasm, you know, to maintain an erection, to uh, have any sort of sensation, all the things that we associate with sex. Um, you know, the good news is that it can take full time, full, uh, can take time for full or partial feeling to return. Um, uh, one of our coaches has told me that she, it took months after um, her, her colostomy surgery for her to feel better. Um, and it did, you know, it kind of came back, but there's some healing time that's going to happen there too. Um, and I hate to be the bad bearer of bad news, but it's possible that some people never regain sexual function. And that's a really tough thing to consider. So, you know, if you've had ostomy surgery and you, you know, you haven't regained sexual function, I'm so sorry. Hopefully with your partner, um, you can find other arrangements that satisfy everybody. Um, there's so many different actions that you can take that don't involve like um, penetration. Um, if you're a heterosexual uh, uh, couple, or even if you're a homosexual couple, uh, it just, it, it, um, it's something that you have to negotiate for yourselves. It's something that you have to um, figure out what is going to be a balanced and fair exchange of pleasure. Um, so sexual function after ostomy to continue on that. Uh, for men, that can mean, you know, reduced sensation. Um, and I mentioned the ability to orgasm, reduced ability to have or maintain a, a, an erection, um, you know, changes to the pelvic floor. I know a lot of men come to their ostomies because they've had bladder cancer or prostate cancer. So um, those muscles are you know, cut into, it's sewn back up and rearranged. So that, that control can be um, altered. And then, you know, there could be changes to urination again, because I mentioned um, that pelvic, uh, the area within the pelvis um, and all the organs there have been messed with. And so um, there, there may be uh, different um, sensations when you, when you, uh, when you urinate um, or if you're uh, even not urinating anymore. So, you know, those are um, conversations to have with your doctor. Um, changes after surgery for women can mean like reduced sensation, ability to orgasm again. Uh, again, those changes to the pelvic floor, um, especially because, you know, women have a vagina and uterus and um, for most women, and uh, those changes can affect the way that the vagina lies within the body, within the way the uterus lies within the body. Um, so it can also, you know, affect menstruation if you're still menstruating, um, and that can also affect your ability to be pregnant. So um, I know our our audience skews a little past the age where you know people are typically being pregnant, um, but it is something to think about and know about when you are having ostomy surgery, and again, um, changes to urination. So you know there may be options for increasing your sensitivity, for increasing your stamina all that good stuff. Um, it could be as simple a solution as some physical therapy for your pelvic floor to rebuild the pelvic floor muscles. Um, it could be more complicated and involve prescriptions or additional surgery. Um, that is up to you and a decision that you need to make for yourself to decide how much you want to pursue, um, you know, uh, pursue regaining sexual function. 
Um, but in any case, don't be afraid to talk to your doctor about it. Don't be afraid to ask for sexual, uh, sorry, for sexual, <laughs> I guess sex is on the brain, right? Don't be afraid to ask for a second opinion is what I meant to say, um, you know, and do your research, go on Google, you know, uh, definitely with, uh, definitely search for information that will give you, um, you know, perspective, um, you know, read about other people's stories, um, you know, and also, you know, keep a, um, you know, keep a sense of discretion when you're doing that research online, because sometimes there can be people promising things that they can't deliver on um, or some misinformation. So uh, definitely, you know, be choosy about your sources, make sure they're authentic and verified. Um, but there is quite a lot of information out there about sex with an ostomy. Um, common questions about sex, you know, can I have sex with an ostomy? And I think, you know, this may seem like a very obvious, um, you know, question, like why, why wouldn't you have sex with an ostomy? But yes, go and get your groove on. Um, you know, uh, early on, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm jumping ahead of myself. How long should I wait uh, to have sex after an ostomy surgery? Well, first you need to get clearance from your doctor. Um, I, you know, I've heard anything for roughly six weeks after onward, um, but again, it depends on your individual situation and whether you're personally feeling up for it, you know, emotionally or physically. And then you should also let your partner know when you're feeling ready for sex, you know, keep that conversation going, um, you know, talk about when you're looking forward to a special night um, in the future at a hotel or dinner out when it's safe to do so, um, you know, with, within, you know, hopefully everybody's starting to get their vaccinations and uh, you can go out and have a, that special romantic dinner. I know my husband and I are excited because we just got our first vaccination. So we were taking a walk the other night and, and talking about how we're going to have date night again. Um, and I know we're both really looking forward to that. Um, and then, you know, uh, you know, some of us have had our rectum removed and sewn up. So be aware that things may not be as flexible or mobile as before. Um, there's scar tissue in the uh, rectal area that can be, you know, tender or sensitive and it's not, it kind of hurts during the action when the action is, is happening. So um, if I just want to put that on your plate, if you, um, if, uh, if you've had that rectal, that Barbie butt or kid butt surgery. Um, and then early on, when my, my own partner and I were, were talking about having sex again, he let me know that he found the bag really distracting. And quite frankly, it is. Um, it's kind of like having a water balloon on your stomach when, when things are going hot and heavy. And that can be, you know, at least um, it can interfere. It causes interference. So, you know, uh, to help with that, um, you know, I got some sexy underwear, some sexy wraps that help hold the bag in place. Um, while we're while we're getting it on, um, and then you know another guy I talked to during coaching session was mentioning that, you know what uh, what he could do to manage the bag, you know because he felt like, uh, you know he wasn't I don't I I think he hadn't received education about wearing a wrap during sex to help manage that bag and keep it in place. So you know it's a very there can be very very easy basic um, things that you can do um, to keep that bag from being distracting. So I think we have a question from Joseph. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Hi, Joseph. Uh, I remember we talked the other day. Uh, do any men have a problem maintaining erection? Yes, people do have a problem maintaining erection um, because of many factors. As I mentioned, the um, the post post uh, the surgery can interfere with nerves. It can interfere with tendons down there. Um, it can interfere with um, uh, you know, your hormones, other things like that. So if you are having a, a trouble maintaining an erection, that's a conversation to have with your doctor. Um, if you think that there's something, um, if there's like a physical malfunction, um, sometimes there's some, you know, some emotional stuff that's going on um, too that can interfere with um, your ability to focus. So, you know, make sure that you have a sense of, you um, you have a you have a sense of confidence in yourself and your ability to perform it, and it definitely, especially as we age, um, that can compound issues. Um, you know, after a certain age, 
a lot of us might experience, um, you know, declining sex drives or just it just gets harder to maintain a reaction, an erection um, uh, uh, as we get older. So again, like I said, that's a question for your doctor. Um, and but a good question. Thank you, Joseph. Um, so we're going to get into some tips for having sex. Um, my first and I think the most important tip is uh, be willing to laugh. Uh, you know, I'm going to give you some real talk here because you deserve it because we're having an open conversation. And of all things, I put past me. Uh, show, sorry, show, sorry to interrupt. You're you're cutting out. You're you're cutting in and out. Okay. Let's see. If there's anything I can do. I'm going to hide my video. Okay. Um, hopefully that might allow my computer to focus on the sound. Does that help at all? That's better, yeah. Okay. I apologize for that um, sound interference. I'm not sure. I actually have a router in my room, so I'm not sure what's going on, but we'll continue to work on any sort of technical problems. Uh, thank you, Arika. So, um, as I was, I was saying, you know, I'm giving you some real talk here because you deserve it. Um, of all the things that I put my pouch through, um, you know, from hiking to surfing to backpacking to weightlifting, um, sex actually seems to have the most impact on, um, on the most likely chance of uh, causing an issue. <laughs> So um, yes, I've had a pouch blow out in the middle of sexy times, um, and it was not like a calm little air leak. The sound that the air made, um, <laughs> the sound that the air made as it burst out of the barrier, was like a tire exploding. Um, it was well to me. I found it horribly funny. Uh, I was laughing so hard I couldn't stop. Um, I think my my partner felt a little more embarrassed and mortified because he was in the zone and um, he was pulled very suddenly out of the zone. So, um, you know, it can happen. Be willing to laugh about it. Uh, maybe invest in a really good washing machine so you can wipe, you know, clean up all the mess that happens, um, get cleaned up again from yourselves, uh, put those sheets in the washer, um, put on a new pouch and, and get on with your life and try again in the future. Um, make a plan. Sometimes, uh, you know, you have to plan for sexy times. Um, you know, for instance, if you are, if you have that, um, if you have some digestive issues or some sensitivity, uh, I would say, um, you know, especially after meals, it might be a good idea to not have a meal before having sex. I would say check for leaks before you have any activity. Uh, make sure that the pouch is looking sound. Um, because you, you don't want to find your situation yourself in the same situation that I was in. Uh, empty your pouch. Uh, your, that, that movement, that stimulation of the body and the senses is also going to increase your heart rate and your blood flow. And so that can send um, extra blood to your digestive system, which might stimulate um, a, blood, a bowel movement. Um, you know, wear a wrap, a belly band, or some sexy underwear, um, you know, and I have some links after this, we'll send you a PDF of some links to some places that sell specific um, underwear for ostomates that um, are, I think my friend used the word, delightfully trashy, um, which is my favorite phrase of the day. Um, and they, they are, um, you know, they, they're made to hold the ostomy pouch in place while allowing for other activities. Uh, set the mood. Like I mentioned, um, you know, uh, you know, we're looking forward to date night with candles and a nice meal and adult conversation. And by adult conversation, it means that we're not talking about school homework or you know the kid um, you know, where where she needs to be uh, tomorrow. We're talking about you know what's what's going on in our lives with work um, and all that other good stuff. And then I would say talk with your partner after to learn what worked or didn't work for them. Um, you know, it could be, again, that that bag is getting in the way or they're thinking about, you know, maybe even hurting you or affecting your ostomy. So again, this is one of those places where that, that good communication comes into play. And it's really, really essential that you talk about what worked and what didn't. 
All right, so we're almost to the end where we can um, start getting some questions in mind um, and answering those. So, uh, you know, again, um, I can't say this enough, be a good communicator, um, you know, share how your ostomy is affecting you and, and let your partner tell you um, how it affects them. Um, you know, it's a team effort to be a partner to somebody with an ostomate and to be um, to with an ostomy and to be an ostomate. Um, you each have a responsibility to each other to make the relationship work. You know, be clear and direct. You know, the best way to get what you want is to ask for it. Um, if you want them to move over a little a scooch here or to touch you there or to do more of this or to speed up or slow down, um, the only way that that's going to happen and you're going to have a better time is when you say, you know, please do this or I need this. Um, and then you can do this. You're, you're not alone. Lots of people have successful relationships with an ostomy. Lots of people have successful sex with an ostomy. Um, it's just, um, it's going to be on you, the person to take ownership of that and make it happen for yourself. Okay, so we're going to chat, um, you know, we're open up uh, the questions, I think um, you can unmute yourselves, it looks like a lot of folks are already unmuted. Um, you know, if you have questions about, uh, well, anything relating to sex, relationships, dating, um, you know, please let me know. I see, oh, okay, I see that, um, <laughs> when it, yes, I will, I will absolutely share the places to get sexy underwear. It will be in the, uh, I don't have it on, on this presentation, but I do have it in the PDF that you'll get after this presentation. Um, I'll, and I'll tell you out loud the names of them. The first one is called ostomysecrets.com. Um, and that is a website that's actually run by Convitec, which probably will sound familiar to you all because it's one of the manufacturers of ostomy supplies. So they do sell a great variety of underwear for men and women. Um, I've actually bought um, underwear from them before. They have a lot of, um, they have a lot of options for, you know, do you want something more, um, more every day? You know, do you want your, uh, I think I use my, my daughter uses the word granny panties, um, but yeah, so I, you know, wear those to cover my ostomy, but they also have the, um, you know, uh, ostomy underwear for more uh, intimate moments. And then the second, my second favorite, or I guess they're equally my favorite, is actually out of the UK, um, uh, United Kingdom. And they're based in Scotland. I bought uh, underwear from them before and it was uh, no problem to get it to ship across the Atlantic. Um, it was just by like buying from Amazon. Um, and they do have um, some, some more of the more delightfully trashy um, underpants with the, that have a, an opening in the crotch and that sort of thing. So, um, and that is called vblush.com. Um, and again, these links will be in the, uh, in the PDF that we send afterwards. I see a question. Oh, I see there was a follow-up question from um, Joseph um, that, that the erection problem happened after the second surgery. You know, I think um, I, I don't have like uh, perfect scientific data on this, but I kind of have the impression that any follow-up surgeries have a higher um, chance of affecting sexual function. And it's unfortunate that that, um, that, that can happen. Um, I think especially if it's in the case where you're having um, your rectum removed and, and sewn up. Uh, okay, I see a question. Um, how do I learn to feel sexy again? Um, well, sexy comes from, se I would say sexiness comes from confidence. Um, do you feel confident with your ostomy? Um, do you feel like you can manage it? Do you feel like you can, um, you know, you feel confident going out in public, that you feel confident eating, that you feel confident that if something happens while you're out and about, um, you can handle it, you can handle a bag change or you have a, a set of clothes in your car. So, you know, you, sexiness comes from, like I said, the confidence and that confidence comes from making plans 
to, um, you know, uh, to, to manage accidents that may happen, um, carrying that backup change bag, uh, carrying those clothes, carrying, um, you know, being aware that sometimes you know that your ostomy will be affected if you do a particular thing. All right, any other, feel free to unmute yourselves and, um, you know, talk to me. Or if you're feeling a little shy and that's totally fine too, you can always send uh, questions afterwards to support at joinbetter.com um, and we can answer those questions. We may have to do some research or something, um, but you know, you'll have privacy when you ask those questions. Yeah, we can also, um, as we mentioned earlier, we do offer um, uh, private coaching sessions. Siobhan is one of our coaches. We also have a couple of other coaches. They're all fantastic. Um, currently, the sessions are totally free and private. So um, I'll put the link to those in the chat. And uh, please feel free to sign up for those. Um, you can ask any questions. Uh, there's, there's no holds barred there. And uh, we'll do everything we can to help you out. All right, so I'll move to, um, you know, our, um, our final slide here. Um, as I mentioned, this is the cover of the um, PDF that you'll receive. Um, it goes over uh, all the things that we talked about today, plus again, those links for the sexy underwear. Um, and uh, then again, uh, uh, Ariha has put the, the link to the coaching sessions um, if you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about what you can do. Um, and then, you know, we'll take a few more moments to let anybody pipe up if they're feeling it. Any last questions? I'm hoping that everyone, um, that everyone has sort of got some good ideas and actually is just ready to uh, head off and, and meet their partners and tell them what they learned. If All right. not, we, well, oh. we do actually have a quick poll for, for everybody. If you could just take 30 seconds, less than that, to, to answer these questions, that'd be great. I have a question. Oh, hi, Sonia. Hi. Yeah. What's, what's your question? Yes. I had just like you surgery because of bad ulcerative colitis for many years. Uh, I have ileostomy and also my rectum was removed just like you and my husband is very kind and he doesn't care about the back or anything he say he loves me he doesn't see it he doesn't care but i have still issue with the sensitivity in my rectum area and my surgery was um, October 18, 2019, which is already a year and a half ago. You think it's normal, still feel so sensitive there? I'm afraid to go on bicycle. I used to ride bike or go swimming because I'm afraid to spread my legs that the uh, rectum area is still sensitive. You think that is normal that long? I, yes, um, I also experience um, some sensitivity in that area. And um, I think uh, it can be difficult for that area to heal because um, we're, we're constantly putting pressure on it. Um, and, and Sonia is talking about, you know, when those of us who've had our rectum removed and our anus removed and sewn up, it's just so difficult to make it, to let it heal. It took mine, I would say over a year. Um, and then, it, at times um, during sex, it still hurts. Um, I would, there's a couple of things I think that we could do. Um, you know, one of the things that I definitely use um, lubrication during sex, um, and that seems to help quite a lot. Um, also, you know, warming up, getting, get, helping your partner um, get feeling, you know, getting aroused um, with um, foreplay and all that good stuff. Um, and then if, if it's still painful, if you might notice like even some tearing or bleeding, I would say go back to the doctor. Um, there's an option for plastic surgery um, that can help manage that. Um, and I know, I feel like when I did my own surgeries, um, it, it was sort of suboptimal the way that, that it, it healed and that, you know, it might be in my future that I go back and talk to the doctor about, hey, this is still causing me problems. 
I would say definitely try try bicycling, um, you know, do the things that you love. And if you notice, you know, pain or tearing, um, you should um, go talk to your doctor and see what, what can be done. So you say that exists plastic surgery to cover the area with extra skin? Um, so what I'm saying is the plastic surgery might allow that area, might address the scar tissue and allow that area to be more flexible and mobile and um, than it is currently. Because, you know, if you think of it, if you think of the, you know, as an incision scar that's there, it it's, can be very lumpy and um, hard, you know, like you might see on other parts of your body if you have a scar there. Oh, okay. So you say there is help could be with the plastic surgery. Yeah. That won't be that sensitive. Now, um, that would be the reason why I, I am hesitant to have sex, even we used to have great sex life before. And my husband is very patient and understanding. Um, also, when I take shower, I it right away bleeds. I have to just spread it a little bit with my towel. Mm -hmm. I even, you know, cannot really dry it, just pet it very gently. And it's still a little bit can bleed. I did ask my doctor if that looks okay. January already a year ago, I asked, uh, January 2020, because the surgery was at Mayo Clinic. And I live in Norfolk, Virginia. And he said it did look okay. It looked good. And that was, you know, year and a half ago, I already asked him yeah. a little bit less, but it's still sensitive and bleed easy. Okay. Like I said, when I try to dry it. Another issue with sex would be a side effect of that ileostomy. I developed peristomal hernia, which mm -hmm. I already had surgery done um, beginning of June. And unfortunately I got it back. So now I'm not going to have second unless it's going to cause issue, you know, like mm -hmm. no pain or not any output. So now I'm worried mainly not to have sex um, because I'm afraid the hernia will start acting up. Uh, okay. Yeah. So if it is bleeding and you're not doing anything, um, you know, beyond sort of everyday normal activity, um, definitely go see, uh, you know, you can know, start with your gynecologist, you can start with your GI doctor. Um, it shouldn't be bleeding. Um, so it does sound like there's a problem there. Uh, no, no, then, it, uh, it doesn't bleed only when it's just very tiny little pink thing I see on towel, usually when I try to wipe it, but not during sex, no. It's just that it's so sensitive that when I try to wipe it with towel, that's when I usually see a little bit pink stuff and I'm very gentle. Yeah. And then the, uh, like I said, the peristomal hernia, that would be reason, the biggest reason not to worry to have sex. And we did few times, but I always wear my hernia belt so Sonia, it sounds like we should get you a coaching session. Can you put your um, your email um, in, uh, send it to me and Ariha in the chat, um, okay? And, and we or your phone number, and we can call you back um, and set sure. up a, a coaching session. Okay, yeah. definitely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I think we have time guys, for one. Sorry. Sorry, if you guys could just answer the questions on the poll, um, it really doesn't take very long and it would really help us out. Um, it should still be on your screens. I think only two people have filled it out. So thank you to those people. But um, if the others could do that as well, that would be great. I don't have it. I cannot see it. It was and disappeared. Um, it should be on your screen. It was, but then it disappeared. Okay. Um, is anyone else having? Oh, oh, Joseph. Uh, we see you've raised your hand. Um, you can unmute yourself and 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 chat with us.
Are you working on Joseph? Are you uh, okay? There I, you go. I've got a black. Yeah, I've got a black screen. I don't have none of your. All I can do is get audio. Um, I can't do okay, the let's let's try anything. it. Let's let's try it again. Thanks for letting us. Oh. How about oh, how about I have it? I got. Okay. How helpful was the what the? Yep, yeah, I got that. Okay, that's your poll, right? Okay. Yes. Yes. I got Thank you, you so now. much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll just give everybody a few more moments to finish the poll. Three questions, shouldn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I took me forever to get this thing on. I couldn't. I'm not real high tech. That, you know what? Sometimes it's not you. It's the uh, it's the technology itself. So don't 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 feel bad. All I've got is uh, where it says something about record, and then I got a thank you in the middle from your your uh, page, and then it's both sides of the of the thank you card or blank. I don't know if I haven't got Zoom on or what it is. All right. Don't worry too much if you answered the questions. Yeah, no problem. I got it. <laughs> I was laughing. I've got one of my, my male Rottweiler just put his feet up and he's like, he's listening to. <laughs> Uh, we have time for a couple of last questions. If anyone has an, a, a last question or two, this doesn't have a lot to do with intimacy. But uh, does anybody have any problems going swimming? I mean, oh, oh, is there a question. special uh, is there a special bag or anything you get for that? Yeah, um, so it's a good question, and uh, you know, getting naked is intimacy, right? Um, so yeah. I think it's definitely <laughs> it's definitely within the ballpark. Oh, we're going we're going nude swimming. Okay, yeah, gotcha. uh, sure, why not? Um, uh, so, um, you know, if you're going to go skinny dipping, you, you don't need anything or even swimming. You don't need um, any sort of special bag. Your bag is made to get wet. Um, you can feel free to shower with it, to take a bath with it. Um, the one thing to be aware of and, and to keep an eye on is that sometimes um, our barriers are, can get oversaturated with water. Um, they're right. made to absorb moisture. So, right. um, you may need to change your bag afterwards if you're looking at your. Oh yeah, your... that that'd be a definite. But yeah, I was thinking, yeah. like, if you go into the ocean, you get wet by a wave. Yes. Oh yeah. No, I've been I've been boogie boarding and surfing. I've spent so much time in the ocean. It's kind of my happy place. So um, you know, it definitely your bag won't be affected by the salt water. Um, well, I just was wondering if it get pulled off. Oh, oh no. <laughs> um, I mean, I think something would have to go really wrong with that. Um, yeah, I was just thinking with, you know, with the, the, is there a smaller bag that you use when you go swimming? Um, well, it depends on your type of ostomy, Joseph. Do you have, I, I know we talked before, but I can't remember what kind of ostomy you have. Yeah, I've got the, you know, Illy. Iliostomy. Okay. Yeah. For yeah. those of us who have ileostomies or urostomies, um, the, uh, this, the fact of life is that we have, um, active digestive systems and they're always going to kind of be leaking, um, output. Yeah. So, the, the um, small intestines never stop. They never stop. That's right. Um, and, and if you have a bladder, um, if you have a urostomy, your, your, your kidneys are never stopped filtering, um, your blood and sending that urine into the bag. So, um, for people with a colostomy um, or who have very slow predictable output, you have the option of wearing a stoma cap. Um, you know, I, I haven't ever tried that because a stoma cap is like a little bit, it's like a little shower cap you put on top of your. Yeah, I've seen um, them in the, in the. Yeah, you put on top of your, your wafer and um, they work great, but um, they can't absorb anything. Um, so if you have a sudden output, it that could <laughs> cause a oops. problem. Oops. Yeah, you get an oops. Yeah, you get an oops. And you know, if it happens in the ocean, well, it, it, 
<laughs> you're going to have a good story to talk about when you afterwards. Um, but you know, also fish poop in the ocean too. So I don't worry too much about it if, if it did happen. But um, yeah, you can also opt to wear um, a wrap. There are some wraps that are made to get wet um, in the ocean um, or when you're swimming uh, that can help hold that bag in place. But, uh, you know, like I said, I've been, um, and if you're a, a woman, usually if we're wearing a one-piece suit or a high-waisted bikini, that will keep the, the pouch nice and, um, and in place uh, to, to take care of, uh, you know, to keep it protected. But like I said, I, you know, I've been boogie boarding, I've been um, surfing, it's, um, yeah, my pouch did great. So, um, you know, please have confidence that you're, Ostomy bags are, are not that fragile, even though they can feel kind of flimsy. Oh, I, I've, I've noticed that they're pretty durable. It's just that I was wondering if anybody had any problem with a, like a, a strong wave hitting you. Because <laughs> I mean, it's hard to say which direction. If you get nailed by a good enough wave, which direction you're going to get. And I was wondering if they could just pull your bag right off your. Yeah, you know, I think break that's the seal. <laughs> a far. Um, it, it's a really funny question. I've never had that. And I think. Um, you, you probably don't have to worry. Um, that would be my luck, though. That's why I asked. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, I can relate. <laughs> my, wife's giving, my wife's giving me funny looks. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? We have just a few more minutes and, and we'll wrap up. We do also want to share that we have um, two really, really amazing sessions lined up for next week. Um, next Tuesday, um, we have Dr. Rosemary Koo. Um, she's a, a physician and internal medicine specialist. She's worked with ostomates and, and, and a whole bunch of other types of patients before, and we'll be having a fireside chat with her um, uh, where you can ask her questions and, and, and kind of learn from her, uh, from her experience. We're very excited about that. And we'll send you the link um, for that session in the follow-up email as well. And then our next on uh, next Thursday, uh, our normal ostomy webinar time, we'll be talking about ostomy and exercise. So we hope to see you at uh, both of those sessions uh, and we'll send the details in the uh, follow-up email as Siobhan mentioned. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming today. Um, it's always a pleasure to speak with you all. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can't wait to see you next week uh, with the fireside chat and exercising, which is another favorite topic of mine. Okay, great. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. You thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.